you know one of the most misunderstood words in all of audio, warmth. You see it everywhere. Guitarists obsess over vintage tube amps for that warm tone. Producers talk about the warmth of an old analog tape machine. Meanwhile, a sound made inside a computer can be perfectly clean, but it often feels cold, sterile, lifeless. But here's the thing. What if I told you that this warmth isn't some mysterious, magical quality? It's not nostalgia. It's a scientific phenomenon, a clever bit of psychoacoustics where hidden frequencies are added to the sound. These frequencies trick your brain into hearing more richness and musicality. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly what those hidden frequencies are and how they pull off their sonic trick. So before we can break down warmth, we have to understand what sound is at its most basic level. Any musical note has what's called a fundamental frequency. This is the note's identity. The note A above middle C, for example, has a fundamental of 440 hertz. It's the purest, most basic version of the note, a perfect sine wave. If we look at it on a spectrum analyzer which lets us see frequencies. A pure sine wave is just a single lonely spike. That one spike is the definition of clean but it's also the definition of boring. A sound with only one frequency has about as much musical character as the beep from your microwave. This is the sound people describe as sterile or cold. It's accurate, sure, but it's missing something. It's missing the ingredients that give sound its unique fingerprint, its timbre. And this is where the conversation about warmth really begins. The difference between a cold beep and a rich musical note is everything happening above that fundamental frequency. So if that's true, why does an A on a piano sound completely different from the same A on a guitar? They both have the same 440 hertz fundamental. The answer is timbre and what creates timbre is harmonics. When a real instrument plays a note, it doesn't just create that one fundamental frequency. It also creates a whole series of quieter, higher frequencies on top of it. These are the harmonics and they're always simple. Whole number multiples of the fundamental are for our 440 hertz, the second harmonic is 880 and the third is 1320 hertz and so on. Now, instead of one lonely spike, we see a whole family of them. The big one for the fundamental and a series of smaller spikes for each harmonic. An instrument's unique character comes from its specific recipe of these harmonics. A flute might just have a strong fundamental note and a second harmonic giving it that pure clean sound. A distorted electric guitar, on the other hand, is buzzing with a complex and loud series of harmonics, which is what gives it that thick, aggressive character. This is what our brain processes as timbre. Harmonics are the colors and textures that give sound its life. Now we get to the heart of it. We know harmonics create character. But why do some create the feeling of warmth? The key is knowing that not all harmonics are created equal we can split them into two groups, even order and odd order. This is the key to the whole concept. Let's start with even order harmonics, the second, the fourth, the sixth, etc. These are musically consonant with the fundamental. The second harmonic is just the same note with one octave higher. It doesn't clash. It reinforces the original note, making it sound fuller and richer. This is precisely what even harmonics do. They add a pleasant fullness that our brain perceives as smooth and natural. This is the signature of warmth. And where do we find these? They are a byproduct of uh, vacuum tubes and analog tape machines. Now, this is a bit of oversimplification. Tube circuits, especially single ended stages and many triode stages, tend to produce stronger even order harmonics when they operate 
asymmetrically. Push-pull tube designs cancel some of these even orders if the halves are perfectly balanced. Now, solid state and clipping that is symmetric tends to produce more odd order harmonics, but real circuits produce both. Uh, tape saturation's harmonic character depends on bias, tape formula, and operating point. It can create complex mixtures of harmonics and soft clipping behavior, sometimes with prominent odd components. In short, both tape and tubes can produce even and odd harmonics. Topology and operating point decide which dominates. Okay, then you have odd order harmonics, right? The third, the fifth, the seventh, and so on. These have a different relationship to the fundamental. They can make a sound edgier, brighter, more aggressive. A bit of odd order harmonic content can add nice presence. A lot of transistor based guitar pedals are famous for this, but too much can sound harsh, almost dissonant, and becoming fatiguing and harsh to listen to. So, the trick is this when your brain hears the subtle addition of those consonant, even order harmonics, it does not hear it as distortion, it hears it as a richer, fuller, more complete sound. That feeling is what we call warmth. It is not a vague magical quality, it is the specific measurable result of adding musicality, pleasing frequencies to the original sound. So, all this theory is great, but in practice, you know, take a clean digital electric piano. It sounds fine, clear, precise, but maybe a little flat. Now, if you run that same audio through a software emulation of a tube preamp, we are not adding anything else, just the character of the tube circuit. You will notice that instantly the sound feels bigger. It is not necessarily louder, but it has more body. It feels more substantial. The edges are a little smoother. What is being done is the addition of a little gentle dose of those even order harmonics. Another example is take a clean punchy digital drum loop. It is tight, but it is sterile. Now, if we run it through an analog tape machine emulation, you will hear how the sharp transients, that initial crack of the snare, gets gently rounded off. The low end of the kick drum feels a bit thicker and more solid, in part because many tape emulations also add a slight bump in lower frequencies that contributes to that feeling of body. The whole kit sounds less like a collection of separate samples and more like a single cohesive instrument. This effect is often called glue. In both cases, we have not changed the notes at all. We have only added these hidden frequencies and transformed a cold sound into something warm and musical. So, what does this mean for music today? For decades, this warmth was not a choice, it was just a byproduct of gear, analog equipment with its tubes, um, transformers, and tape by design added these subtle harmonic distortions. Engineers did not see them as flaws, they were part of the sound. They learned to use the equipment to enhance a performance, pushing a preamp a little to add richness or hitting the tape hard to get that smooth compression. When digital audio arrived, its goal was mathematical perfection, no noise, no distortion, no coloration, and it achieved that. But in doing so, it removed the very imperfections our ears loved. That is why some early digital recordings were often called as cold or sterile. They were too, too perfect. They were missing the subtle harmonic richness that was a beautiful accident of the analog process. Today, we have the best of both worlds. We have the pristine clarity of digital, but also an incredible number of tools designed to reintroduce those analog characteristics. We can now intentionally add the gentle saturation of a tube or the punchy character of a transformer distortion with surgical precision. We are no longer just capturing sound, we are 
consciously shaping its harmonic DNA. So the next time you hear someone describe a sound as warm, you'll know exactly what's happening. It's not magic. It's not just nostalgia. It's physics. It's the measurable physical addition of musicality, of musically pleasing harmonic frequencies that enrich the original tone, making it feel fuller and more alive to our ears. It's the difference between a sound that's merely accurate and one that is truly musical. Now, I have a question for you. What's your go-to piece of gear for software for adding warmth? Is it a specific tape emulation or tube compressor plugin or something else? Let us know your secret weapon of choice in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed cutting through the myths of audio, you can be sure to enjoy these videos on master tape to vinyl, high-res audio myths. I'm always breaking down the hidden signs behind the music you love and you won't want to miss what's coming next.